Ah, so you've decided to learn JavaScript. Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how you can learn JavaScript quickly and effectively from my eight years of being a software developer. And I'm going to include topics such as how you can get started literally today, what it is exactly you need to learn, how to study to be super effective, how to improve your skills rapidly, and of course, how to land that first job. So let's just dive in. So where exactly do you need to begin? Learning JavaScript is pretty similar to how you would play a musical instrument. You don't just buy a piano, a clarinet, or a trumpet and just start trying to play songs with it. That's going to be a massive waste of your time. It's actually better to take that first few weeks and months to maybe learn something like music theory or how to hold the instrument or how to play single notes. When it comes to learning JavaScript, though, the process is nearly identical to what I just described because you really need to start with the basics first. Now, when it comes to the basics in JavaScript, this encompasses a whole bunch of stuff. So, for example, syntax, meaning the rules of the programming language, data types, variables, operators, functions, methods, control flow statements, how a basic website works, HTML, the DOM or document object model, and of course, one of the most important things, which is problem solving. The better that you learn these fundamentals, the easier and quicker it will be later on to actually start applying these skills by building real projects. So this brings up the next question, which is how exactly do I learn those fundamentals? The great news about this is that you don't have to go back and create a checklist from those basic concepts that I just mentioned a minute ago. Instead, most modern or high quality learning resources that you can choose from are going to explain a lot of those basic concepts for you. So the next step for you is to find that high quality learning resource. And I know what you're thinking, right? It's like, there's so many to choose from. But honestly, there, there's really not. I guarantee you that you could spend the next hour researching on Reddit, on Google, on Twitter, and seeing what five books or online courses keep coming up over and over again and make a list of three of them and just choose a single one. And of course, look at the Amazon reviews, look at the customer reviews and see which one is best and just pick the best one that you can find. The key to making this work is you don't pick five, you pick a single one and you follow it until it's completed. So if it's a book, you follow it all the way to the end. By the way, one learning resource that I've heard is pretty high quality is this YouTube channel. So if you agree with that and you find this content informative and somewhat entertaining, then definitely go down below and make sure to hit the subscribe button so you get notifications when I put out new videos. Okay, so you've done your research, you've picked your learning resource, you're rolling up your sleeves, you're ready to go. Let me offer you three very quick pieces of advice to get the absolute most out of your study time. Number one is that structure is your friend. So that means create a reasonable schedule for yourself and follow it. Number two is your study time should be sacred. So that means find a room or a place in your house where you will not be interrupted. It's even good to find some cheap noise canceling headphones you can plug in where you won't hear anybody talk and most important put your phone on airplane mode so you will not be tempted to check social media youtube or text messages and number three is that you need to study for a minimum of 15 hours per week because you are literally trying to rewire how your brain thinks and you cannot do that on five hours per week yes it would be better if you could do 20 25 hours but the minimum is 15. If you're following my advice up to this point, it's gonna take you anywhere from two weeks to maybe two months to complete that single learning resource that I mentioned. As you're near the completion of that book or tutorial, the next phase you're gonna go into is the rapid skill progression phase. We're gonna get better quickly. And this really only comes from what I call real practice. You can think of what I call real practice like this. Let's say that you wanna become an architect. So you go to school, you get a four year degree. We really focus on building skyscrapers. When you leave that school, does it mean that you are ready to start building the skyscrapers? The answer is no, of course not. What ends up happening to a lot of people like this is they go first work a job at some architecture firm or something like that. They get a lot of real world experience where they take the theory that they learned in school, they see how it's applied and what they actually gain the tangible skills of being able to build a skyscraper. You're going to follow the same basic process when it comes to learning JavaScript. So you're going to spend anywhere from two weeks to two months learning some of the fundamentals. And then immediately after that, you're not going to get a job. What you're going to do is you're actually just going to start writing code. Now, there are two ways that I think are the best for engaging in real practice. And the first way is to really start building projects without tutorials. The worst thing many of you will do is pick a very hard project for your very first project. So I recommend picking first three easy projects, three intermediate projects, and one really hard project. Projects. So your first three projects, I would recommend something like a to-do app. So an app that allows a user to input to-do items, cross them out. The second easy application can be a rock, paper, scissors game, which is pretty self-explanatory. And the last one can be a random quote generator where you click on a button and it generates a random quote. From there, you want to step it up into intermediate projects. So I would build three intermediate projects and all of these should be built in a modern JavaScript framework. I recommend React. 
And I would recommend building a, a weather application, right? So something that shows the current weather for whoever's viewing it. Number two is a calculator app. And the last one could be something like a slideshow app where it just shows a bunch of pictures in a slideshow. The very last thing you wanna do is put everything you've learned together and build the most complex project possible. This can be a number of things, but I would recommend something that is maybe full stack that has a front end, a back end, and a database. So for your case, you could build a real time messaging app. So something where somebody can log in, they can send messages and that's pushed out in real time to other people who are also logged in. This is very complicated, but it's the type of thing where it's so complicated, so complex that if you built it by yourself, you can walk into a job interview and potentially impress whoever's interviewing you. Now, I want to be absolutely clear here that the reason you're building these projects is A, so that you can show a track record of building projects that are progressively more and more difficult and completing them. And then number two is to really work on your skills. So take all the theory you've learned, apply them, get better at problem solving and your understanding of JavaScript in general. Now, the second way that you can engage in what I call real practice is to solve programming challenges. There's a concept in sports called drills where you want to improve a specific part of your game. So you practice that specific thing over and over again until you improve that skill. Well, you can do the same thing in programming in JavaScript through programming challenges. And the website that I personally recommend for beginners to drill their skills is edibit.com. The reason I absolutely love edibit.com is because you can choose from different programming languages, choose a skill level from very easy to very hard. And of course, you can pick specific skills that you want to work on. So if you struggle with arrays, you can pick arrays. By the way, I'll leave a link in the description below of how you can join edibit and get 15 free programming challenges. Now, what I just explained to you, the concept of real practice is meant to improve your skills rapidly, but I'm going to warn you at this point that this is where things will get really hard. In one of my favorite books, Mastery by George Leonard, the author explains that the progress in any skill pursuit is not a steady upward climb, but instead it's a series of plateaus where progress seemingly stops. This is crucial because when you start building projects, you will spend long stretches often just staring at a computer screen trying to figure out why the code you wrote doesn't work. This is going to be jarring for a lot of you guys because you're so addicted to the daily progress you see when you're following a book and a tutorial. But when you start building projects, all that comes to a halt. The best thing that I can suggest to get through this very difficult period when you're building projects and going through programming challenges is to let go of progress. You're not going to see progress like you did before. Just try to enjoy the process and know that if you do this, you will get better faster than your peers. Now, the last part is how to land a job and we'll cover that in less than 30 seconds. If you've gone through everything I've mentioned so far and you've finished those seven projects, you're likely ready to start applying for jobs. Now, here's how you job hunt, okay? So number one, create a portfolio website. So it's just a website that shows off all of your projects. Number two is update your LinkedIn profile. So it includes a lot of your projects on there. Number three is to apply to 15 jobs per week. Anything that's junior developer, internships, or anything that's asking for less than two years experience. And of course, number four is to prepare for the technical interview. If you want great information, just search here on YouTube. If you can follow those four steps, you're putting yourself in a great position to get hired. Last thing here, if you are a self-taught developer, so somebody who is learning this on their own, you're looking to land a job, I want to let you know that I have a mastermind program where I've helped numerous past clients land jobs at places like Chase Bank, Amazon, L3 Harris, and a lot of other places. So if you're interested in getting to know more about the program, I will leave a link in the description below of how to do that. It involves booking a call with me, but on that call, it's a free assessment. So I figure out where you're currently at, and if the mentorship program is a good fit, I lay out the investment and what it looks like and all that good stuff. So check that out below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and peace out.